I'm back and I'm live and we're getting ready to talk about porn, rape, torture, and bondage. Everything that was Mark Wiegert's November 15th prediction for the motive to kill Teresa Hallback. Now I want to bring this up because in Kathleen Zellner's recent motion November 15th was a date that stuff was searched but stuff was deleted now November 15th is a big day in the life and time of Stephen Avery he's been sitting in jail for six days arrested November 9th for possession of firearms as a convicted felon man this coffee is just so good anyways so this is what we gotta do we have several, several, several places to look at in this live. And what I want to do, I want to go through November 15th, where it's succinct in your mind, okay? I want to link links. We're going to break some chains. We're going to break some theories. We're going to link some stuff together so where it's all clicks. Some of y'all thought y'all never see me again. Mm -mm, y'all's wrong. Y'all's is wrong. So anyways. Let's get down to business. On November 15th, very big things happening in the world of Stephen Avery. You got Mark Gundrum, who is in Madison. And you have Mark Gundrum being approached by Norman Gaughan, by Tom Fallon, by other Department of Justice leaders from the Attorney General's office and they're telling Mark Gundrum hey this is Stephen's murder these are Teresa Hallback's bones we've got a pretty good inclination that this is Teresa Hallback. But Teresa Hallback won't be verified until January 17th of 2006. Okay. So, just to refresh your mind on who Mark Gundrum is, Mark Gundrum started the Avery Task Force. Mark Gundrum was a representative from New Berlin, Wisconsin. He is the man who wanted no more Stephen Avery's to go down for wrongful convictions. And here we have Department of Justice interjecting tunnel vision into Mark Gundren's mind. And that's the irony of what's going on here is we're getting tunnel vision to Mark Gundrum. You're not supposed to jump to conclusions before the evidence is concluded. Okay? We don't have Teresa Hallback confirmed on November 15th. But they're telling Mark Gundrum, hey Mark, this is this is her. So, Mark Gundrum 
gives a statement to the press that he feels really, really bad for the Hallback family and to continue the Avery bill in Stephen Avery's name would be disrespectful to the Hallbacks. Now, what persuades Mark Gundrum to do this is... This is what's going on in the political realm. You got law enforcement speaking. Okay, so come back down inside of Calumet County. You have Uyghur talking to the media. And Uyghur says, hey... We're going to take out a warrant for Stephen Avery's computer. And we're searching for porn and torture and rape and bondage. Because this is the M.O. for Stephen Avery to murder Teresa Hallback. And when we get that... This is also what Gundrum's been told in the political realm. Now it's important to bring up November 15th because when they take this warrant out, they're searching Stephen's hard drive for this. Now if you recall in Kathleen Zellner's recent motion, if you just read it or watched any of the channels where they had live readings November 15th is on one of the dates where hey we got stuff being searched but a lot of the stuff is cleared out on the search which is funny because Bobby gets this rap for looking at porn, rape, bondage, and torture. But this was Mark Wiegert's prediction for the motive that they're going to find this stuff. So, Veely is in charge of going to the computer. On November 15th. Stephen Avery's computer. Then on March 1st. We get Brendan. A car's confession. And it's all about. Porn. Rape. Torture. Bondage. Everything that Mark Wiegert was talking about. On November 15th. Here it is on March 1st and it's now coming from Brendan Dassey's mouth but what don't they do they don't pull the Dassey computer we know there's a Dassey computer they're going through in November with live cameras and we see the Dassey residence computer in November. So why do they not grab that computer on November 15th? Why do they not grab it on March 1st like they did on November 15th? They're not doing it because there's some A, B, C, D, E, F, G developments that the simple minds don't ever connect dots to. But you go down a rabbit hole, you go down a rabbit hole, you ask questions, you want answers. So Brendan Dassey, Ken Kratz on March 2nd highlights the rape, the porn, the torture, the bondage story. And this being the M.O. to murder Teresa Hallback. 
all of a sudden he's an accomplice to Stephen. Well, this was exactly what Mark Wigger was looking for on November 15th. He put it out in an article. So you think if Mark Wigger's prediction, prediction was we're going to find all this stuff linked to this case on November 15th, you would think Mark Wigger would grab that DASI computer March 1st, the same day that Brendan Dassey tells his third and final story on camera, to the camera. And when he's arrested, and then you think on the follow-up on March 2nd, when everything is lining up with Wiegert's November 15th prediction, that Ken Kratz would sign off on a warrant for them to go in and get the computer for Brendan Dassey. But you can't do it that day. And we're going to go over to ABCDEFG of why you can't do it on March 1st. They don't never get the Dassey computer until April 21st. A month and 20 days later. And then we start seeing porn, rape, torture, bondage come up on that computer. And in hindsight, 2020, Kathleen Zellner is trying to link it to Bobby Dassey. But the truth of the matter is that hard drive is planted. That hard drive was planted. It was supposed to be planted with Uncle Steve. When that computer goes off, if you got porn, bondage, torture, and rape, and that's the motive, you already had an accomplice in November. And they did have an accomplice in November. And Sheriff Pagel hints at the accomplice in a November article. He says, we're not going to discuss accomplices this time. But if you remember November 10th, DCI agent Kim Skorlinski, he is interviewing Brendan. And he's telling Brendan, now is not the time to be lying for Uncle Steven. We know you saw body parts in this fire, Brendan. Um... I kind of know you went back to the garage. All this stuff that comes back out on February 27th, February 28th, March 1st, in the interviews of Brendan Dassey, it all came out on November 10th when Kim Skorlinski, when he's interviewing Brendan. They just put everything on pause in November and bring it back at the beginning of March. Okay? And there's a reason they did this. But first of all, I want to make it very apparent that on November 15th, Uyghur, he is written in journals, newspapers across Wisconsin. The motive to kill Teresa Hallback is porn, rape, torture, bondage. And that's why Uyghur takes a warrant out for Stephen Avery's computer. This is November 15th. So, what urged Mark Gundrum... To change the name of the Avery Bill and go live on a press conference on November 15th is the same thing that's driving Mark Gunner to believe that Stephen Avery is guilty and that's porn, torture, rape, bondage. That was Wiegert's prediction. On November 15th. And they told Wiegert November... Or did Wiegert gone in Attorney General Lottenschlager's office. 
told Mark Gundrum, hey, we found body parts. This is her. The DNA is going to conclude it. This is what happened. This is what we believe happened. Okay. And Gundrum wants to change the name of the Avery Bill. Because to continue with the Avery name will be disrespectful to the Hallback family. Okay. This is all going on November 15th. This is... This is the planning stage of what is going to happen to Stephen Avery. Okay, so they take Stephen Avery on November 15th. He's been sitting in jail since November 9th for felon in possession of firearm. Convicted felon in possession of firearm. But now, November 15th, they're adding the charges. And all the charges add up to the porn, rape, bondage, torture, MO that Wiegert has. Wiegert's prediction of why Stephen killed Teresa Hallback. And then if you look into another article, you have Jerry Pagel, the sheriff of Calumet County, saying... We're not going to discuss any other accomplice at this time. But they had Brendan Dassey as accomplice. You can't go back and review November 6th and then November 10th with Anthony O'Neill and Skorlinski and not say that Brendan Dassey was a main suspect because he was. So November 15th, they're lining up. A plan to take Brendan and Stephen down November. But I told you A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They can't keep interviewing Brendan because when the Avery Bill is being signed, okay, when it's going forward, you see in the Avery Bill that there's accredited courses that law enforcement must now take if they want to interview a child and here, here's the thing with this you're premeditating and predicting the MO of bondage and rape and torture Stephen's not going to do that alone so you're bringing in one of the Dassey boys okay one of the Dassey brothers you're going to bring them in they're going to take Brendan because you've already interviewed Brendan. You already know Brendan is a little slow. You already get that Brendan is not... His mind doesn't work normally. Okay? He's a little slow. He's a little suggestive. A little too suggestive. So, November 15th, they wanted to get Brendan and Stephen and do the whole accomplice bit. But they can't because the Avery Bill... Makes law enforcement have to have that accredited course hours. You got to have the training now. Okay. And they also hold off because at this point they're talking about what is called to memorialize your appearance on camera. And this is all in the juvenile recording law. This has all happened in political Wisconsin. And you have... You have... Neil Nelson teaching his technique, which is to put a camera in the face of law enforcement so if they do anything wrong, it's memorialized. And Neil Nelson was became the Attorney General's Peg Lautenschlager's model policy to learn from. Neil Nelson showed up at all these seminars that she set up for law enforcement to learn to interrogate juveniles. So Neil Nelson's technique was build rapport with the suspect, have sympathy for the suspect situation, and to act like a good cop on camera 
And that's what we see happening February 27th, 28th, and March 1st. So when Weger and Fassbender are are interrogating Brendan Dassey. So the the reason for holding off on bringing Brendan Dassey in the mix in November is because that bill asking for those accredited hours to be there. And the state is like, well, we're going to learn Nelson's approach because it's law enforcement friendly. It's the best thing shoved down law enforcement's throat. Neil Nelson teaches, memorialize what you need to say because the audience, the judge and the jury are going to view it. And if there's anything that's nefarious, they'll be able to pick it out. And so this is why law enforcement, all these years later, think that Weger and Fassbender had a delightful approach and did nothing wrong to Brendan Dassey because that's what they're trained under. And this was the training that they were getting at this time. This was set up by the Avery Commission when Peg Lawton Slager took over, uh, Keith Finley, Jerry Budin, even Stephen Drizzen, Vic Wall. All these people were setting up these commission hearings every month and they were discussing the recording of juveniles and how to interview them. And no one has blown a whistle about this. Not Jerry Buden, not Keith Finley, not Stephen Drizzen. But yet, no one wants to talk about why we see the calm presence we do. There's no good cop, bad cop in Uyghur and Fassbender's interrogation of Brendan Dassey. It's actually a Nelson and a Reed technique hybrid. They're memorializing their self. Okay. So they look absolutely 100% like angels on camera. And that was that was the Neil Nelson. Now, if they just would have went ahead and did this in November went after Brendan, their technique would have been completely read technique through and through. Now, when Dassey's convicted... Stephen Drizzen takes over, gives Laura Nyrider the Dassey file and says, learn everything you can about the read technique, but he doesn't bring up Nelson whatsoever. He never blows a, a whistle on Nelson, but he was at seminars where they taught law enforcement the Nelson technique and he never brings it up. There's even, I've even had people message Jerry Buden and say, hey, what's Neil Nelson's technique? And they, Jerry's like, you mean the Reed technique? <laughs> and like, no, Jerry, Neil Nelson's technique. You know, the guy who y'all had come and represent interrogations on video and teach law enforcement under Peg Lautenschlager's model policy whenever the entire state of Wisconsin was being retrained to deal with children because after all you got the Gerald's case Stephen Drizzen and Keith Finley they write an amicus brief and it goes to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, Wisconsin Supreme Court, in July, they mandate the recording of children to be video, audio. Okay, they mandate it, and they literally say, Avery Commission, you're responsible for putting this in your new bill for all the outlines. So Jerry Buden, Keith Finley, they're... With, with the other Avery Task Force members who are now the Criminal Justice Study Commission members. They're all getting together. They're inviting people like Joseph Buckley of the Reed Technique, Stephen Drizzen, because Stephen Drizzen is the Mike, 
Michael Jordan of False Confessions in the Chicago and Wisconsin region. He's one of the guys who helped to mandate video recording. But no one comes to Brendan Dassey's aid. Okay? So, why I find it hard for Bobby Dassey to take the punishment for all of this porn rape torture set up if Bobby Dassey was setting up Stephen Avery Bobby Dassey if he's planning evidence okay if Bobby Dassey is planning evidence Bobby would just go over to Stephen's house and get on Stephen's computer and type all this up. Uh, porn, rape, torture, bondage. Let's search at Stephen's house. Okay? I mean, the motive for Uyghur on November 15th was porn, rape, torture, and bondage to kill Teresa Hallback. He takes out a warrant for Vili to look over Stephen's hard drive. If Bobby was planning anything, you think he would do that in Stephen's house. Now, you got all this evidence being planted by somebody somewhere. And we know that it exists. We know that it's planted because bullets pop up without um, going through Teresa's skull. They're, they're taking bullets and dabbing lipstick. And you got bones that show up that were... Once over here, now they're there, now they're over here, now they're giving back to the Hallback family. You got all these evidence. You got the key that appears from the bookshelf, yet Jerry Buden and Dean Strang don't take that bookshelf into court and shake it to show how that key could fall out. They had all that opportunity but failed. So, anyways, if you got all this other planted evidence and you have porn, rape, torture, and bondage on November 15th, Somebody is going to plant those in searches, okay? And to me, November 11th, Fassbender sends Sherry Colhane an email. Put her in his garage. Put Teresa Hall back in Stephen Avery's garage, okay? I think that... You know, we're going to try the bullet science. If that fails, we have a backup. Backup's going to be this planted hard drive where we can say Brendan and Steven were together. We already got notion of accomplice for November 11th from, from Pagel. There is no other accomplice that would be in this mix but them trying to attach Brendan to Stephen to begin with. The best part about it for law enforcement is when they coerce Brendan, Brendan sets the stage up where he did it with Uncle Stephen. So, on March 1st, when you're arresting Brendan Dassey and porn, rape, torture, and bondage was the motive to kill Teresa Hallback, but you don't take the Dassey computer out of the house... <laughs> you can't do it because you already have an article where Weigert was looking for that exact stuff November 15th. Somebody in the media, if they're peeping the game, what's going on with law enforcement planning stuff, they're going to say, hey, you were looking for this November four months ago. Porn, rape, torture, and bondage is being the motive to kill Teresa Hallback. Here it is, November 15th, Uyghur. You remember taking a, a warrant out? You, you amended Stephen Avery's arrest complaint to add all this stuff to it. Okay? March 1st, you get Brendan Dassey to tell a story of everything you predicted November so how come it took four months to get Brendan Dassey to 
to confess. Brendan was already your main suspect in November. The reason it took four months is because the legislation bill changed and you wanted to learn how to memorialize your law enforcement presence when you talked to Brendan Dassey again. You had to have those accredited course hours before you went and talked to Brendan again. So if you take that to trial in front of a jury and a judge, oh, we see nothing wrong here. They're, they're acting pretty good on camera. And that was what, when Peg Lautenschlager, the Attorney General of Wisconsin, at the time, November, December, January, February, Neil Nelson's running around doing all these courses. Uyghur, Fassbender, Fallon, and Kratz actually take these courses. Stephen Drizzen, Jerry Buden, Ken Hammond, okay, they're actually showing up to help teach some of these courses. And they discuss it furthermore in these Avery commissions, okay? But yet, no one's grabbing the DASI computer on March 1st. We got porn, rape, torture, bondage as the motive to kill Teresa Hallback. Brendan DASI is relaying the story just the way Uyghur thinks it happened on November 1st. But we got a four-month gap of how Brendan DASI was spared because of legislation and people don't get it. You can't grab the DASI computer on March 1st because then they say, aha, what's going on here? Everything you said November is now happening in February. Pagel was hinting to an accomplice. Y'all never brought us an accomplice until four months later to February. So did y'all know Brendan Dassey was in the mix already? That's, that's the point to show that Brendan Dassey's premeditated, okay? Now go back to November 15th. November 15th comes up in Kathleen Zellner's motion where stuff was searched for, but it was deleted, okay? I 100% believe that anything on the Dassey computer was planted by law enforcement, not searched by Bobby Dassey, okay? If Bobby Dassey is doing all these searches, after he allegedly kills somebody, he's not going to be doing it on his computer and leaving the searches available, okay? You, you burn all the technical gadgets to begin with. Teresa's computer, her GPS, um, camera, all this stuff. Not the computer, the camera. You get all this stuff burned in the burn barrel. If you're Bobby Dassey, you're not going to keep searching stuff after or before and leave the technical device intact if you're Bobby Dassey and you murder someone that's evidence you got rid of all the other evidence why aren't you getting rid of this hard drive if you have already are framing Steven hey uh, Steven comes over and uses the computer that's something that would have been suggested by Bobby Dassey the law enforcement off the rip okay so in hindsight 2020 Zellner is failing to look at the November 15th article from Uyghur where they originally take out a warrant for Stephen Avery's hard drive. Rape, torture, rape, torture, porn, and bondage. The M.O. to kill Teresa Hallback. And yes, if you look in November at Sheriff Pagel's Insight, there is an accomplice. We just can't bring Brandon Dassey in yet because Uyghur and Fassbender have it trained under the Nelsons, under Neil Nelson's technique to memorialize their self where their presence on camera looks like, hey, we didn't do anything. So, with that being said, 
the hard drive is 100% planning. Okay. They were wanting to get an arrest on Brendan Dassey in November, accomplice to Uncle Stephen, rape, torture, bondage, and porn. And that's the motive to kill Teresa Hallback. And Brendan Dassey would have been that accomplice. We already have Kim Skorlinski, DCI agent. He's there talking to Brendan November 10th. Brendan, come on, we know you saw body parts in that fire. Brendan, did you ever go back to that garage on that night? Brendan, were you in the garage on that night? Brendan, now is not the time to be lying for Uncle Stephen. Okay, and, and what do Fassbender and Weger tell Brendan on video? We already know what happened, so let's flash forward to Brendan's conversation with Skorlinski, November 10th. And now here we are, February 27th, 28th, and March 1st, okay, 2006. And, Brendan, we already know what happened. Just tell us what you, what we think we should hear from you. And then even Brendan talking to Barb on the phone. Brendan says, they already know what happened they just wanted to hear it from me like and and then brendan tells you know i guessed okay they fed him enough information where he could guess at everything he's going back to what skorlinski's told him what Uyghur and fassbender are feeding him brendan guessed it what they wanted to hear and it doesn't come in the sequence they want it but they take the chunks out that they want and they run with this porn, rape, torture, bondage theory on March 2nd, just like Weger had November 15th, but yet they're not feeding the media those tidbits to speak about because it's going to blow their plan up. It's going to show that they're premeditating the accomplice of Stephen and Brendan as early as November 15th. It's just that that Avery bill disallowed them to talk to Brendan anymore in the middle of November. See, this is why I research this stuff, because when you have legislation in effect, there's guidelines that law enforcement have to live in. They got to live in those guidelines. If they're saying, hey, we're not going to be allowed to interrogate children unless there's video now, you're going to follow those guidelines. And if the Attorney General has made a model policy for interviewing child custodies and custodials and juveniles and he's she's setting up all these courses in madison wisconsin to take milwaukee to take and they're getting neil nelson to come to these courses and teach law enforcement the benefits of memorializing yourself on camera then Weger and Fassbender aren't going back after Brendan Dassey until they're adequately trained, okay? They have to be adequately trained so they don't slip up on camera. And we even hear um, Smart Weger in Making a Murder, he goes, Ken Kratz wanted us to go back and tape everything of Brendan Dassey and memorialize it. He even uses one of Neil Nelson's technical terms of what they're being taught in the model policy course that the Attorney General put up. And so, if you look at the Avery Commissions, we have Ken Hammond speaking about the model policy course. We have on camera 
where Ken Hamming goes over the model policy course. Um, actually, I'll try to pull that up real quick, and I'll, I'll read to you from it so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So, I was it going to revert to any documents, and, but I want to I wanna talk to you about this document because it is very important that this document is ascertaining your brain because this is happening four days before Brendan Dassey is coerced. And it is a meeting at the it's Avery Commission meeting. And it has a lot of insight. It's got a lot, a lot, a lot of insight about what's going on politically. And if you take all this information and you're able to digress the parallel of the investigation with the politics, and that's what I do. I draw a line politically and a line everything happening on every road and we go beyond so you can show how everything ties in whenever you review this document of this commission happening on February 23rd you say holy shit the truth is right here it's all every bit right here so let me pull this up I want everybody to be really really aware of what they're doing to Brendan at this point and why Nye Rider and why Drizzen have never brought this to the forefront. Because I'm going to point it out to you. Letting my computer load is going actually pretty slow. It is it makes no sense why they haven't ever ever discussed discussed it, but it's so disgusting. to pull this up give me 10 minutes to pull this up give me 25 minutes to pull it up <laughs> I'm working on it, guys. Give me just a second. Criminal Justice Study Commission.
Okay, so going back to four days before Brendan is coerced. And we're talking about why Drizzen and Jerry Buden or even Keith Finley has never blown a whistle on this because they were all there. And why Lord Nyrider never got this information either. Um, about the Attorney General's model policy and how it correlates specifically to Brendan Dassey of how Wiegert and Fassbender used a hybrid technique of Neil Nelson and Reed to coerce him. Now this is very, very important stuff because what you're witnessing is sabotage of a 16-year-old child. And again, this will all come out in Dassey Memorial Lies coming very, very, very soon. Take you to the meeting. Okay, here we are. Four days before Brendan Dassey is arrested. I don't know if you can see that, but we have. Wisconsin Criminal Justice Study Commission Summary of Commission Meeting. Okay, that's what I'm reading. It was held February 23rd, 2006 at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Present for commission meeting. Um, you have Ken Hammond, Jerry Buden, even Steve Glenn is there. You got Keith Finley, you got Penny Bernstein, okay. Uh, now, here's where this gets really, really crazy. Because Joseph Buckley is at this presentation. And Buckley is the president of Reed and Associates, okay. And Buckley begins explaining the Reed technique. Okay, Buckley talks about all the read techniques, okay, and then Buckley will sit down, the chair will call Richard Leo, who, you know, he's a really good friend of Stephen Drizzen, and if Richard Leo's here, of course, Stephen Drizzen's here at this meeting, um, so... Leo explains he spent a large part of his career researching false uh, confessions. Okay, you go down to Ken Hammond is the next presenter. So Ken Hammond's making a third presentation on February 23rd, 2006. Now, Brendan is being interrogated. It begins February 27th. Now, what we... What we have happening, August 31st of 2005, Ken Hammond talks about the AG model policy. Jerry Buden, in that August 31st meeting, it's the first meeting of the Criminal Justice Study Commission, which is what the Avery Task Force began, Jerry Buden states that, hey, we could have these professionals come in who deal with false confession, bring in uh, witness expert witnesses. That was Jerry Buden's suggestion. So from August now to February, in the political scenes, from September, October, November, December, January, February, for the last six months, Jerry Buden, Keith Finley, Steve Drizzen, 
Ken Hammond, Attorney General Lawton Schlager, they've all put together these courses working together in this Avery Commission. And so we're at the point four days before Brendan Dassey is coerced. November, they bail out on Brendan, Wiegert, and Wiegert and Fassbender have taken this course. They're just finishing up February, end of February, and that's when we see them go back after Brendan Dassey. But four days prior to going to Brendan Dassey, this is what happened. Malmestad, who's the chair, then introduced the next presenter, Ken Hammond. Ken Hammond is the director of law enforcement education and the training bureau at the Wisconsin Department of Justice. Before his presentation, Hammond provided a number of handouts that he discussed during his presentation. And now you got to remember, Laura Riccardi and Maura DeMora is here filming this. This is on live camera. This is being filmed by the girls who created the documentary and I urge Kathleen Zellner to pull this so you can get Ken Hammond's presentation here. So Hammond described the training currently being conducted by the Wisconsin Attorney General's Office on the topic of electronic recording and police interviewing. So we have this model policy, okay, Hammond explained that the Attorney General has implemented a model policy on electronic recording and conducted training sessions around the state on some of the issues raised by recording. The training included presentation by Neil Nelson, a commander with the St. Paul Police Department who has developed a method for suspect interviewing in the post-electronic recording world. So Neil Nelson went around and taught at these seminars that Attorney General um, Lawton Schlager set up for her model policy. She made Neil Nelson the poster child for law enforcement in Wisconsin to learn from. Okay, That's why in November, the absence from abandoning Brendan Dassey, they didn't want to interrogate him again until Fassbender and Wiegert went to these courses. Okay, So... Hammond then described Nelson's, Nelson's technique. Hammond said that Nelson emphasizes the interviewer's role, which would be Fassbender and Wiegert, as an impartial gatherer of facts. In this role, the interviewer should look for and explore provable lies. Hammond also explained that Nelson emphasizes softening the police presence softening the adversarial nature of the interview and respecting the anxiety of the suspect. And we see Wiegert and we see Fassbender soften their police presence towards Brandon Dassey. They're taking, this is textbook Nelson right here. They're talking to Brendan and they soften their police presence and they respect the, ang the anxiety of Brendan Dassey. Okay, therefore Hammond said that Nelson's method departs somewhat from other models of interrogation. This would be the read. Hammond also noted that with electronic recording, interviewers need to be more careful about their conduct because that conduct will be memorialized forever. Now, Neil Nelson had this uh, technical term, memorialized. And the audience is the judge and the jury. And we hear Wiegert, I was talking about, Wiegert goes in and says, hey, let's memorialize, Ken Kratz wants us to memorialize Brendan Dassey's interview. When, Ken, when Wiegert is saying that, he's getting it from this study group, this uh, one of these law enforcement training sessions that he was mandated to go to by the legislation now. You can't interview a child unless you have legislation. And guess who they're letting get, making sure goes to this training now from November to February, his weaker and fast spender because you got to bring Brendan Dassey back into the mix. Okay. So, um, uh, a 
Hammond then described Nelson's technique. Hellman said that Nelson emphasizes the interview's role as an impartial gatherer of facts. In this role, the interviewer should look for and explore provable lies. We soften the police presence. Um, be careful what you do on, cam and, on camera. Therefore, Hammond said that Nelson's method departs from other models of interrogation. This would be the read. Hammond also noted that with electronic recording, uh, everything is going to be memorialized forever. So, Wiegert and Fassbender get held by law enforcement in Wisconsin because other law enforcement says, Hey, look, they did no wrong. They did exactly what Neil Nelson taught them to do with a child. And, but you got to remember, this was the first child in Wisconsin. But he added that electronic recording has the potential to restore the public's trust in law enforcement. So, so Jerry Buden's here. Stephen Drizzen's here. And this is four days before Jerry, before uh, Brendan Dassey is even coerced. Four days. We're not talking like weeks, months. We're talking four days, okay? This is the beginning of the week before <laughs> he's, he's uh, the beginning of the end of the weekend before he's criminally coerced by using political strategy, okay? Political strategy got into bad hands and they're manipulating it, okay? And, and it talks about... Uh, we 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 don't ever hear Drizzen ever discuss Neil Nelson's technique ever. Not in any of his follow-ups, yet Neil Nelson happened. Neil Nelson was a big thing here. So 13 years later, for Stephen Drizzen to never blow a whistle on how Uyghur and Fassbender were training on this. Even Fallon and Kratz trained here. I have emails where Kratz said he chose Fallon as a prosecutor because him and Fallon trained in custodial interrogations in the Fifth Amendment, okay? And they trained under this, this model policy at these seminars, okay? So what you got going on here... Why has Drizzen never mentioned this Neil Nelson technique in public? But yet him and Jerry Buden was here, okay? And we see the police presence being softed by Uyghur, okay? And Fassbender. Also in a read technique. Read technique, they usually just throw you in a 13-hour-plus long interview, and they good copy and bad copy. But we noticed that Uyghur and Fassbender do a three-day interview session before they get the stuff that Brendan Dassey wants and this was one of Neil Nelson's uh, things is don't let the interviews be too long cut it off come back and talk to him tomorrow the next day and that's the way Neil Nelson worked he didn't want to stress out the people he's an impartial gatherer of facts and provable lies and if you already got your premeditation there's no need to cuss Brendan Dassey out and take him on a 13-hour long ride because you're not going to get anything out of Brendan Dassey like that. You want to set Brendan's mind up because you already know that he's not functioning on a level normal. You can't spend three days with the kid and say, oh, he's not suggestive. So Nelson's technique was to train instead of continuous hours do short hours over a span of multiple days and that's what we see happening with with uh, Brendan Dassey and his interviews okay that's how Fassbender and Uyghur are conducting their interview because they're being memorialized this is straight Nelson now when I say that they used Nelson, they used a hybrid also to read, and we'll get into that in a moment. But right now, um, Hammond said that Nelson has been very well received in Wisconsin, in, in part because his approach is viewed as law enforcement friendly. So the camera makes him law enforcement friendly. He teaches that friendly approach when you're on camera and we see Uyghur and Fassbender doing that approach okay 
Um, Hammond said that Nelson, in Nelson's experience, electronic recording has been the best tool ever shoved down law enforcement's throat. Because, um, you know, if you're on camera, you got to behave. That's why it's the best tool shut down your throat because they're being memorialized. Hammond then described the Attorney General's model policy on electronic recording. Okay, so then Hammond goes into the model policy of Lautenschlager. Hammond walked the commission members through the various documents in the model policy binder and the various elements of the Attorney General's training program. So, at this point, we're getting... The entire Avery Commission is going over the, the model policy that was discussed to the Avery Commission back in August whenever Jerry Buden said, hey, we can get these experts to come. Here it is February now. We got Joseph uh, Buckley here, President Reed and Associates. We have Stephen Drizzen, which when Hammond sits down talking about Attorney General training program, that Uyghur and Fassbender took and about Neil Nelson who taught at these seminars and who Attorney General Lautenschlager elected to teach at these law enforcement training sessions his techniques and he was there in the flesh okay he'll sit down and the next presenter is lo and behold Stephen Drizzen now, Stephen Drizzen is the director of Center on Wrongful Convictions at Northwestern University Law School, and Drizzen began by discussing a document from 2001 that described Reed and Associates' approach to interrogating juveniles. According to Drizzen, the document contained a number of fundamental misconceptions about juveniles. Okay? And so we heard... And Neil Nelson's approach as Hammond described that Hammond difference from the Reed technique because you got the police softening, okay? Neil Nelson didn't believe in doing anything nefarious to get confessions. The Reed kind of goes into a lot of misconceptions, okay? Um, and purposely misconstrues your suspect. So, when I say Brendan Dassey is being interrogated under a hybrid of Nelson and Reed, um, that's, that's provable. You can take this document that explains Hammond's, Hammond's research on Neil Nelson and his teachability to law enforcement, and, and Neil Nelson is on camera saying, hey, um, I taught those guys who interviewed Brendan Dassey, okay? He's he's on audio. He remembers them. Kratz went to this law enforcement training. Fallon went to this law enforcement training. Okay? So so they're they're doing the friendly approach, taking Neil Nelson's taking uh, notes from Neil Nelson's textbook and applying them in the Brendan Dassey interview, okay? So it makes you wonder why Stephen Drizzen has never brought this up, but yet he knows exactly what the Nelson Technique and exactly how Weigert and Fassbender applied the Nelson Technique along with the Reed Technique in the interview, but yet never got Laura Nyrider to look into this. So that's why, that's why I have a, a lot of problems with Stephen Drizzen and Laura Nyrider, who sleeping with the enemy has been brainwashed and has never even looked into the Nelson technique. It's never brought up all these years later about the mis the false confession of Brendan Dassey. It's never brought into play except for by me reading this four day document going politically before Brendan Dassey's course four days prior to his coercion. So keep this in mind. Uh, Drizzen is discussing a number of empirical facts about juveniles that render them vulnerable to false confessions. Okay, 
and then he goes on and on. He shows two videotapes of interrogations of juveniles and briefly discuss the tapes. Malmestat, the chair, he then began a discussion among the commission members. Okay. Uh, so Butin, Jerry Butin is sitting at the round table with other law enforcement prosecutors and the members that make up the Abra Commission. Butin asked Drizzen to elaborate on the factors a judge should consider in conducting a pretrial reliability hearing for a confession. Drizzen said courts should consider, one, whether the confession fits with the objectively knowable facts of the crime, whether the confession contains non-public details that would be known only by the police or the, per or the true perpetrator, and whether the confession led police to information they didn't already know. And so when you read my book, Dassey Memorialized, you're going to see that political attorneys are signal law enforcement what to do, and I think this was a signal Everybody's watching for Jerry Butin's command. Jerry Butin is the is the uh, signaler to law enforcement of what needs to happen. Okay, and when he when Butin and Drizzen discussed this four days prior, this little hypothesis scenario happens to Brandon Dassey. Let me elaborate on that. Okay, so. Whether the confession fits with the objectively knowable facts of the crime. Uh, did the confession contain non-public details that would be known only by the police or the true paper perpetrator? Well, the police had this information. Teresa Hallback was shot in the head. The public didn't know that. Um, they're planning bullets to make it look like Teresa Hallback got shot in the head. And then they have to coerce Brendan into that information that... Teresa got shot in the head. Brendan, who shot her in the head? I'm just going to go out and say it. Brendan, who shot her in the head? Uh, the true perpetrator, Brendan Dassey, and the true perpetrator because Brendan Dassey, something with the head, Brendan, something with the head. Oh, he cut her hair. No, Brendan, something else happened. I'm just going to come out and say who shot it. Brendan Dassey is not the true perpetrator. They had the science, the junk science, all premeditated. They had Brendan Dassey as porn, torture, rape, and bondage premeditated. They wanted him in November, but couldn't do it until they went over Nelson to a T. And then, so they hybrid Brendan Dassey on Nelson Technique and Reed Technique. But yet, in post-conviction, we never hear anything about Nelson Technique. And that's why I'm so pissed off. And if you get to where I'm coming from in this documentary, you should be a little pissed off, too. Um... Whether the confession contains, whether the confession led police to information they didn't already know. So then when they get that, he shot her in the head, they're in the garage, blah, blah, blah. It led police back to the garage and they start collecting evidence that collaborated Brendan Dassey's um, story. But yet, we find out that that evidence is planted. Now, Bobby Dassey did not plant those bullets because Brendan Dassey is premeditated. Yeah, you, you, you can't say, hey, uh, they're talking to Brendan, let me go put some bullets in the garage. No, that's, that's law enforcement doing that. Sherry Colhan comes on the scene, uh, DCI agent. DCI agent Kevin Himmerl is supposed to look down off camera when they're not recording and find them. And that's what he does. And then lo and behold, the planted bullets come into the palms. The law enforcement goes back to Sherry Colhane where she dabs them in some chapstick. And uh, lo and behold, oh, we got DNA on the bullets. Uh, it must have passed through her head. Nope. Big lie. All premeditated. So, uh, anyways, whatever Brizen asks Drizen to elaborate on the factors, four days later, what Butin and Drizen is questioning and answering becomes Brendan Dassey's life to a T, okay? 
And that's why I say it was signaled on what to do to Brendan Dassey in the political realm. Uh, because this is open face records. They just go back and get the minutes and study it. And if you look throughout the entire Hallback case in these Avery Commission meetings, everything is happening parallel. That's why I was doing the parallel reference because at different times of the months, everything comes into play in the exact months as it's discussed in the month at the Avery Commission. So you're going to learn a lot in Dassey Memorialized. I wanted to point this out. Um, so Nelson didn't ever like deception. Um, that was one thing. If you ever just study Neil Nelson, Nelson uh, was was cautioning Wisconsin to just completely come out and lie to police officers because it could bite you in the ass. But if you got a state crime lab that's willing to collaborate. The confession of the perpetrator who shot her in the head, and then the uh, the crime lab goes, "Oh yeah, bullet passed right through her head." If you got someone to play ball, then everybody's gonna believe that this confession was true. But you know, it's starting to unravel slowly. But Zellner won't be able to unravel any more of it until she starts going the route of. What I'm exposing. So, anyways, um, that February 23rd meeting, the last footnote on page 11, it said the members then discussed the documentary filmmakers who filmed the meeting. And that's the very last line in the minutes, the summary minutes. Um, so there we have the approach to the mechanics of how Brendan Dassey was manipulated and coerced and Neil Nelson technique was a part of that and we actually have factual training of Uyghur and Fassbender abandoning Brendan in November coming back to him in February after they take the accredited courses of the Attorney General's model policy courses with Neil Nelson, Neil Nelson as a guest pre presenter on his technique um, if you get into May of 2006, Neil Nelson shows up at the Avery Commission, <clears throat> and we actually hear from the chief of police in Milwaukee, who comes to an Avery Commission, and he talks about how since early December, when the courses opened up, 2005, for uh, teaching interrogations how he's actually teaching a hybrid he's teaching a hybrid Nelson and Reed technique okay and from basically December of 2005 forward to especially for like the first eight months these uh, courses were mandatory to law enforcement okay you're gonna Discuss if you're going to interview children as a detective, you had to take these courses. Their model policy of the Attorney General Lautenschlager. Okay. And the man of the hour was Neil Nelson. And so you got to revert back to Brendan Dassey is the biggest fuck up 
in child custody interrogations, and he's the first child in Wisconsin to be coerced. And it just makes you wonder why Stephen Drizzen and Jerry Buden, four days before he's coerced, they have this conversation to elaborate everything that Drizzen and elaborates for Jerry Buden becomes Brandon Dassey's life four days later to a T, but yet you never hear Drizzen talk about the Nelson technique. You never hear Jerry Buden talk about Nelson technique, and you never hear them get into depth of how child custodial interrogations um, were being softened by police presence by Uyghur and Fassbender. You never heard that one time, but it happened. I just read you. I mean, some of you hopefully got chills because you can see Fassbender and Uyghur soften their police presentation. Now, Neil Nelson has met Jerry Buden in person. He's met Stephen Drizzen in person. He's met Keith Finley in person. These are three people who believe in the credibility of Brendan Dassey being coerced, but yet these three people, Drizzen, Finley, Buden, have never brought up no Nelson technique, yet they were implemented in we Ken Hammond, the training Bureau of Training Director for the Department of Justice for Wisconsin. How can you go to these great lengths to try to overturn stuff in the read techniques at an on bank hearing, but never never show premeditation of the model policies at that hearing of Fast Bender and Weger, the Attorney General's office. There, there comes a point where if you're the political attorney attached, if you're the political attorneys attached to the state, you got to remember Drizzen come as an expert witness for the state and he he's trying to change trial outcomes. Why didn't Drizzen take on Brendan Dassey pro bono? Why didn't Jerry Buden pick up that phone on March 2nd and say, Hey, Dr Drizzen, we just talked about this six days ago, seven days ago last week. I mean, it wasn't months ago. It was just literally last week, Drizzen. Um, and now we got all this coercion going on, but we just literally talked about this. Can you can you represent Brendan for me? You do such a good job. Great time volunteering all your state for the political Avery Commission. And we want you to talk about some of this stuff as a witness expert for us, for Stephen Avery and his nephew. I mean, can you do pro bono work? I, mean, I know when the Jarrell's case went down, you wrote an amicus brief and you were very active in getting. They're recording for juveniles overturned. You know who Stephen Avery is because you're really great friends with Keith Finley. And look, if it's not too much, can can we get you as a witness expert? And can you possibly take Brendan Dassey pro bono? I mean, you're the you're the Michael Jordan on false confessions in this area. The phone conversation never happened is what I'm trying to get at, but it should have been burning holes in the room. How can you how can you be at this level on the forefront of saying you're for overturning Brendan Dassey's false confession, but you're not mentioning the Nelson technique and how it aligned with the Attorney General's policy and how Uyghur and Fassbender took those courses, how Ken Kratz and Fallon took those same courses, how Jerry Buden and Stephen Drizzen and Keith Finley were all there with Neil Nelson in, per in person, but yet they act like they don't know who the man is. Kathleen Zellner, 
got some serious questions for you. So, anyways, you need to start making Finley, Butin, and Drizzen talk. Laura Nyrider, you need to investigate February 23rd, 2006, Avery Commission meeting thoroughly. And I know Drizzen handed you over the Dassey file, but it comes down to it, he purposely steered you in the wrong direction. You were new to the Innocence Project there, the Northwestern University in Chicago. He should have gave that Dassey file to three of the greatest minds in that business, not a little green thumb and directed her to the read technique. It's bullshit. So going back to Brendan Dassey as the accomplice, we know that Brendan is coerced, porn, torture, bondage, rape. That's the M.O. for Teresa Hallback's motive. Yeah, they don't pull the Dassey computer out that day. <laughs> Weger got the got the uh, pre the uh, prediction for all this to be a motive on November fifteenth. Hey, let's let's take out Stephen's hard drive. November fifteenth. He's been sitting in jail since November 9th, six days. Let's go get his hard drive. Let's look for all this stuff. Okay. Lo and behold. March 1st rolls around. Brendan Dassey's confession backs up exactly what Wigert was looking for on November 15th. But they don't pull the Dassey computer. They don't pull the Dassey computer till April 21st, a month and 20 days later. And then the results from there is hidden by Fassbender for 13 plus years <laughs> before it comes to light and then in hindsight being 2020 is Bobby Dassey and that goes back to oh well we we might want to start giving way to a third party Denny and we set that up by making Bobby and Scott Tadage do alibis of each other let them have that that's the only reason that makes sense if people start looking towards Madison, Wisconsin for a frame job then the place unravels but if you keep your eyes on Avery Road you got a different accomplice you have a scapegoat but the only thing is I'm predicting it I'll tell you again and again so it's recorded I'm predicting it they're just going to say Bobby Dassey was involved with Brendan and Stephen and this is a hypothetical response to Zellner's recent brief filed in August of 2022. They're just going to say, hypothetically, Steve went to Cribbits, left as a diversion, left Bobby there to clean up. Because even though Bobby's putting evidence stuff and burning evidence, he's under Stephen Avery's command to burn the evidence and blah 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 Bobby takes it further but see that even pushing the rav four with the witness that's not the day of the alleged murder so they're just gonna say you know Bobby Bobby might have had a change of heart somewhere along the way and tried to put the pieces for the law enforcement to get Stephen but the thing is Bobby Dassey was on the property too. He says he left. Stephen says Teresa left. There's no difference in if the state wants to claim that Bobby stayed and helped Brendan and Stephen. They'll just make Bobby a third party accomplice to a crime instead of a third party Denny suspect. Do you get what I'm saying? They're not going to trade one Stephen Avery and one Brendan Dassey. For a Bobby Dassey. It's not going to work like that. The state has an out just to say hypothetically the day of the murder 
Bobby just helped and then Stephen forced him to clean up and Bobby kind of left some clues behind. It's not going to get the evidentiary trial. It's not going to get a new trial period. It's not going to get any of the relief that Zellner is requesting because the time frame that she's inferencing is not the date of the murder. The date of the murder, Stephen was in the porn rape torture bondage had the motive going there to kill Teresa Hallback he's got a ride away to Bobby's house he went over to talk to Bobby earlier that day that's on that is on in statement um, he went over to talk to Bobby around noon time and that is and then he goes back home then Teresa comes and he goes back over by Bobby's and Bobby's gone but the state's gonna say oh Bobby leaving Stephen was alibi and Bobby okay because Bobby was involved in the murder and that's all you gotta do to stop an evidentiary hearing is could the outcome have changed even with all this evidence not if not if Uncle Stephen is manipulating all the Dassey brothers are one or more of the Dassey brothers that is how that works that is how you prevent an evidentiary hearing if you're the state of Wisconsin and this is what is going to happen I've predicted everything to be 100% correct and any motion deference from the state deflecting Kathleen Zellner's motions i've been correct and it's all happening under political atmosphere she's not gonna unwind this thing until she goes political so just waiting to hear from this so i can say hey look i told you so again evidentiary hearing denied new trial denied because bobby dassey was manipulated to be involved on the day of her murder october 31st when Stephen goes to Krivitz, he says, hey, Bobby, stay behind, clean up. Bobby just got a leg, hey, I'll leave some of the, uh, of the stuff behind. And Bobby just gets a uh, notion to try to help the cops look for stuff because Stephen's a really bad man. Doesn't mean that Bobby killed him, just means that Bobby was involved in killing her and then changed his heart and started trying to frame Stephen. I mean, th this was easily done to prevent an evidentiary hearing. This is where this motion is going to go. Um, does it change the outcome of the death of Teresa Hallback? Uh, third party Denny suspect versus third party accomplice? It's easier for the state to say that. Bobby acted with Stephen and Brendan, and that's hypothetically as an accomplice, but yet there's no evidence to prove Bobby was there, so no action or recourse will be taken against Bobby Dassey. And they say if he was the way he came into the evidence, it's not because he's the sole murderer, but he just had a change of heart. That's it. That's all they got to do. Watch it unfold in the motion. So Kathleen Zellner, please start listening. Again, the motive to frame Stephen Avery is greater and will always be greater than the motive to kill Teresa Hallback. And specifically... Any motive on Avery Road to kill Teresa Hallback versus the state, the capital, Madison, Wisconsin, to frame Stephen Avery. That is so much greater than a motive to kill Teresa Hallback. And then you got Teresa Hallback going to the DOJ's personnel's address who was working for Auto Trader. Ding, 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 ding. She's alive, folks.
That's why you're giving bones back. That's why you're manipulating evidence. Wake up. Bobby Dassey. Did not search that hard drive. It was planted. Bobby Dassey is not a killer. If you got that much shit to hide, Bobby Dassey wouldn't be living there anymore. Bobby Dassey wouldn't. Scott Tadage wouldn't even live there anymore if they had anything to do with that. And I don't think Mike Osmundson would be there anymore. They would have saved money up. They would have jetted town. The alibis were specifically for post-conviction appellate to start looking at them as a third-party Denny, but the third-party doesn't Denny doesn't matter because when Jerry Buden and Norm Gone wrote that portion in the Avery Bill, if the evidence links the defendant to the victim, then you can't offer a third-party defense. And that third-party defense goes in line with, well, Bobby helped Brendan and Stephen, and then he just got away with it. It's all hypothetical. You're given hypotheticals of what could change an outcome. So there's no way in my book that Bobby Dassey is a murderer. Um, comment, like, if you want to go live and have discussion, I'll be uh, Avery, the truth of heated discussions, coming to the group, have a chat, let's talk.